fresh best of three as we continue through this section of the bracket round of 16 now as in the bottom right hand corner the blue protoss player from team liquid is mana and he is taking on the red terran player in the top left hand corner of the map it is beyond uh, just a quick mention that if you're watching this one on youtube to not forget that if you enjoy the video to like and consider subscribing uh, we'll launch in, I mean, this is a series, obviously, with two very fun players hoping for some good fun here from the ESL Open Cup Europe number 90. Um, but yeah, we're, we're trying to revamp the YouTube a little bit. It's really had a bit of a rough year, and I know I've probably, you've probably caught me saying this a couple times here and there. Um, but making a big effort with new thumbnails, new ways of doing the titles and stuff, just seeing if something sticks. Uh, because the YouTube alg algorithm works in weird ways, but what does absolutely help is obviously... You guys enjoy the games that you like them you interact with the videos and stuff it really does go a long way to helping out so it would be great if you guys do that if you end up watching this on youtube it might not even be a good enough series for youtube in which case youtube never heard that and only twitch chat heard it and it was a complete waste of time but you know we just don't know that's the problem with live streaming games to put on youtube right it's like you don't know which ones will be good enough for youtube so it's like oh, you're kind of in a bit of a weird position aren't you a bit of a weird place to be Absolutely. Factory coming down already from Bjorn in the main base, so just getting that started to begin with. A refinery coming in. I'm just going to see that probe moving up the ramp. Nibble, nibble on the supply depot. And I'm just going to move back and forth a little bit there with the marine popping out. Obviously, that's why you want the probe not sticking around too much, because if this is marine first, it arrives sooner than the reaper. So you don't want your probe just to be caught off guard. And then that marine gets ahead of it, and then you can just start a step for the kill. You want this probe to stay alive, get back home, maybe come back later for further scouting, or maybe even proxy something. You've got so many options with the probe staying alive back onto the map. Let me drop one pylon down to the bottom left. So it is a proxy from Mana. We'll see how aggressive he wants to be here with this. Looking at the position of it, doesn't it's not a Stargate kind of proxy. Maybe it's a gateway, and because this is a one base opening from Bjorn, you'll be able to A, warp in units defensively off that additional gateway, and B, can then use that gateway to counterattack as well. It's going to build a Twilight, so maybe we come back and Dark Shrine there, maybe it's just a pylon to not be used at all. But Twilight on the way initially, the problem with the Twilight at first is that it doesn't help you against this Hellion drop, you know, or Hellion run by into Widowmine drop. Nope, it's going to be a Hellion drop doesn't help you against this at all you're not going to get anything off the twilight to actually you know aid you in this at all even slightly so if that's the case man might be in some trouble he's going to need a really good defense here and just going to have to make sure he doesn't skip out on any gateway unit production make sure he's got enough up and running to deal with this we are going to proxy the dark shrine that's really nice when this turns around into the, the counter-attack, right? And, you know, on the follow-up, there's only one orbital, so there's not a lot of scans available. One base builds don't typically open Raven, so there's not detection available. But what if too much damage is done before then? You know, if these Hellions can get in and do a serious amount of damage, there will be some trouble. Bjorn It's going to go towards the natural, which is exactly where Mana's Stalkers are, but there's only two. Ah, but now he's on two warp gates, so... Yeah, Hellions will drop down. Honestly, we'll just not do much. Probably just going to lift into the main base. Has the boost. Obviously trying to avoid a little bit more damage there where possible. And then we go. This is really where we need to start seeing some probes going down. Otherwise, Bjorn has no real wiggle room when it comes to defending against the DTs. Medivac is dead. And his new Medivac's on the way. And obviously, Widowmine's coming next time. He's hitting Stalkers, not probes. He's missed a lot of potential kills there. As he didn't target the probes as he should have been. Eight workers probably could have been 11, 12, and every extra worker is going to go such a long way, man, these DTs. When there's only one base available. Okay, there's a tech lab on the starboard now, so he can be on the way to a Raven. That's great if he gets there, but now let's see, because the first DT is already moving forward. It's a long time to defend against without the Raven, and detection not available from a scan. We're 20 energy away from that. And even then, you can only do, you know, if a 1DT goes at a time, you only have one scan. Let's see what the Widow Mine drop does. This mana does not have blink yet. So, can't blink on top of this. Just the two Widow Mines on load, and it is with Cloak because of the armory. That should tell mana there's more Widow Mines in this medevac. He should be ready for this. The DTs walk straight into the main across the map. We'll check on that in a moment. Mana's looking at his DT, it would seem, as these probes go down. Eight workers killed. DT in the main is going to be scanned. He's going to make a run for it if he gets out of detection range. He does not. Uh, next DT shows up, though. 
And this one will create problems. Raven is, is really close to finishing those. So looks like Bjorn's build really is working out well to make sure he can get a Raven out in realistic timing. 14 probes dead as these Widow Mines fire a second time around. That's a Widow Mine disaster. As the Raven does show up. And that's going to be two dead DTs for only, well, units. He didn't even kill an SCV. While man is still losing workers to the Widow Mines, and this really, like I say, is a disaster, because these are going to fire one more time each before the Observer is out, so you're going to lose at least a couple more probes, at least four more, realistically, unless you just run and you really do wait. You're going to lose one more here, so that's two more in the natural. Uh, at least two more in the main base, right? Nope, even... Oh, nice last-minute split away. Gets two on this one, at least, so... Uh, just fantastic damage off the Widow Mines. Now Bjorn has his natural in place, a worker lead in play, and his army's actually looking terrifying. Two tanks, a good amount of marines, the Raven to back this up, and the Stalkers are all at home because obviously they've been busy defending, so there's no Stalkers on the map to stop you moving across. So if you did want to start making your move across the map, like I say, there's, not, there's nothing really there to stop you in the slightest. Now a few Stalkers of Mana are going to make their way up to the top of the map here, so away they go looking for maybe a, a potential blink into the main base or something. There are definitely options here. The Raven of Bjorn is down to the south side and will have the option to take a turn into the main base as well. So a couple of options for sure. Our reactor building up on the starport, an additional barracks building as well. So far so good. That third Rax is going to be done and just going to be seeing that Robo Bay now is on the way up. So Mana can get himself into the next stage of this. No defense in the main, which... Okay, one tank, but I mean, it's a big main base, and that tank's very far forward for the natural. Two more probes going down as the auto turret gets harassing. Seems the Raven is not in position back at home to defend, but he's got turrets, so I guess he is not too concerned. Five SCVs went down. Oh, these stalkers have already had to blink a couple times. He's going to lose one that's recalling and one that didn't get blinked properly or recalled properly, I should say. It did blink properly, it just wasn't in the recall. Oh, so that's a couple Stalkers dead on the end as well. 37 to momentarily their 7 army supply. Now 13 as a few more Stalkers get warped in. Yon is very well aware of the fact that he has just killed a whole bunch of Stalkers. And that manor in general has just not got a lot of units on the map. So starting to move. If we get to a Colossus, that can absolutely help. But if Yon gets across the map anytime soon, well, put it this way, manor is going to be in some serious trouble. If Yon doesn't go, well, manor can somewhat play this game out because again once the couple claws are out it becomes a lot tougher to get stuff done stalker went down here as he's trying to slow this down the whole point of this of course is to try and make it so that these uh oh the stalker's going back up that ramp we should have a scan right for this dt yep and now the dark shrine's going to go down too so just going to clean this out before we get further regression on the map from Bjorn. Yeah, I mean, obviously if uh, Bjorn went across, mana has the Stalkers to at least chip away at a few units, make life a bit more difficult. Ah, I kind of like these Stalkers moving in here. They have to easy blink out the bottom side, but man, he just sees Marauders. He just sees the unit count. He doesn't even let a final fight happen. Mana, no, why? We want to see one more fight. He's obviously only got 10 army supply. He is kind of dead if Bjorn pushes, but what? Number two in the top right-hand side down a map. It is mana as he faced off against the weird opening that Bjorn has been doing so much. Bjorn bottom left, Red Terran. He has been doing these kind of one base openers a, a fair amount as of late, actually. Like, there has been a, a very real amount of that going down. It's been pretty fun to watch him, him do it, because not a lot of people have been doing this. Not a lot of people have been doing that at all, actually, so... That's pretty neat as we just uh, see him continue to make it work as well. I was watching him do it in another tournament recently. I'm trying to think why I casted Bjorn. Probably the Summer Championship, I want to say. And he brought it out a couple of times there. To, to kind of some success. It's cool to see the builds he comes up with. And like I said, to be able to do it repeatedly, because he does do it like game after game, and don't necessarily know if he's going to do it right now, but I wouldn't rule it out, you know? I, I'd say that is still an option. You can still do something very similar here as Bjorn initially, and like I say, he has had ways to make it work. Obviously, you can argue the biggest issue for Mana was the part of this uh, game where... Or the part of that last game where he obviously... The DTs just didn't do enough. And, and that happens so much nowadays. The Terran gets some damage done, then the TTs just do nothing. And then, of course, from there, the Pros is just in a really tough spot because they invest so much into that DT tech. If you take damage and you don't deal damage and you've not teched properly, 
you're in a lot of trouble. And of course, Mana tried anything he could. He tried the Blink Stalker, counterattacks, etc. But the Wooden Mines obviously got so much damage done as well, and that's just going to offset anything that Mana did offensively with the Stalkers. So, a fun game one. Fun to look back on as well. As this is round of 16, if I'm not mistaken. Round of 8, I believe, potentially has Showtime to play against. Could be cool. Um, but yes, the round of um, 8 is obviously where the prize money begins as well. Today we have $250 up top, I believe. $150 for second place. And then it's like 100 in the round of 4. And then $50 in the round of 8. That should add up to $800. Maybe my math is, math is a little bit off. So, uh... And a couple of extra barracks, by the way, starting up in the main. So we're going to see a three racks here. This is the beauty of Bjorn's build as well, right? He just walls off. And because you're fully walled off, it's like, well, what now? And Mana's like, well, I, I actually have no idea. You could be proxying. You could be doing the same build as last time, where everything's just built in your base. He, it could be an expansion, which this time it is. So the mind game here from Bjorn is beautiful. Uh, and that's why this build's so scary, because then you can force an overreaction in game two, and then three racks of bio hits you, and you didn't properly prepare for three racks of bio, then you're in trouble. And I think that's why Mana's building this really early game sentry, because he wants a hallucination to figure out what's going on. He's actually going to build a second sentry. Now, this adept sentry sentry as an opener in PvT is not very common at all. He's going to go twilight behind it too, but the problem with double sentry before your twilight is your... Twilight is really delayed from where it's meant to be because the double sentry takes up so much gas. I mean, I wouldn't have even minded just one sentry, but the double sentry has me intrigued. He did go super fast third base. I wonder if Mana just wanted to pull the trigger and say, you know what, I'm just going to risk it. Because if he does a harassment focus build and I have three bases, maybe I can just rebuild my workers easily. And you know what? I feel like this might be worst case scenario for Mana because obviously it's three racks. And now he's going to have a very late Twilight. Blink will not be done. A lot of this also comes down to what Bjorn sees. If Bjorn checks for the third base and finds it, third gets killed, and then that early third base really doesn't go to much, and you're delayed on your tech for no reason at all, and that's a problem. If Bjorn doesn't see the third, and you can force field the ramp on the natural, keep Bjorn out of the nat, and keep these marines from doing damage, then Mana can maybe get into a decent spot. But I feel like right now he's really, really reliant on Bjorn, making mistakes more than anything else. We're actually going to warp in double battery on the top of the third ramp, so he looks like he wants to try and hold over there. Gun picking his moment to move across. I mean, now might be it, because he's got no more units in production that are going to be joining up anytime soon. These are the last couple of Marines on the low ground, and that seems to be the trigger. So he just wants everything to move across the map together. He's going to find one Adept to begin with. One Marine takes the first blow. Put an Adept down, and across the map we go. Man, he's already on 47 probes. Immortal will have to walk from the main to the natural, uh, to the third base, right? No, it's actually already on the natural, this, uh, Robo, so... He'll have an Immortal here pretty soon, too. If Mana defends this, he's in such a good place, because he's got such a good work account. Because force fields are good, and Bjorn's gonna be scared away. He saw the Nexus finished, though, so he knows the Nexus is already done. Will you still try and make something happen is the big question, of course. We're gonna stim in, and this time the force fields were a little late, but they get there in the end, and it's enough! With the super battery. And Bjorn is going to have to chase away from that. Or run away from that. And Mana now is up almost 20 workers. Man. This super early third. And then the sentries to force field the marines away. Has worked wonders for Mana. In this game number two. What a defense that is going to be. Game saving force fields. To keep Mana alive. In game two. Robo Bay is building in that natural expansion. Just going to be seeing the Immortals, Sentry, Stalkers. All joining up together. And just going to see how Medivac is going to load up and head across to the upper side of the map. So wait, re-roll. Observer might have just glimpsed those. Looks like the Stalkers are on track. He wanted to try and hide the probe to hide the fact that he'd seen them. The Stalkers already here. Bjorn wasn't ready for it. Yes, he was. Ugh, he boosted, but he loses one Medivac. Anyway, this game turns from, well... What is it? It was already a bit of a disaster, really, right? And it turns from, from bad to worse. I feel like that doesn't even really do it justice. It's worse than that. It's a nightmare. 
to, it, it, it was a nightmare, and then he woke up, and it turns out it's actually just his real life, you know? Like, he's still stuck in the nightmare. The nightmare is reality now, yeah. It's, it's just worst case scenario. Everything here has obviously gone very wrong from Bjorn. The build was fantastic from Mana. I really love it. Very, very dependent on obviously doing the right thing. It's very, very possible that you make a mistake there, right? One missed force field in this game could end. But you've got to put, you know, you're a top level player. You've got to put your belief in the force fields, your spell casting. That's exactly what he did to put himself in this position now where, I mean, just look at it. Still up 20 workers. Bjorn only just started third. So his third starts almost four minutes later than the Protoss player's third base. And he has not had the pressure on the map to really justify that now. The only thing I'd maybe be worried about now from Mana is this attack here. Medivac's out. Bio Army powered up a little bit. There is a Colossus out, but the Zealots don't have charge. And if that Colossus gets itself caught, this Bio Army could still potentially overwhelm. Of course, you've got sentries to try and help dictate the fight as well. That's Bjorn. Looks like he's just going to move to the side here. But there's no Reaper Wall off or anything, so you won't have any freebie kills here. So the best he can do is a lift up into the main base, or maybe that pylon on the far right side doesn't look like he's going to go that far across, though. Marauders and two marines is going to be able to grab a zealot there, and of course no charge yet, but charge is going to be done soon, the Colossus! Force field is going to help him out, Widow Mines are going to burrow, now maybe you can jump on the left side here, though. Widow Mines do blow up on the sentries, the immortal barriers get popped. That is about uh, about it for the moment as we see some extra units just going to warp in at the moment. That's a defense from Mana absolutely as our third CC gets to start morphing in. So our third CC is going to be up just in time for this pro army to arrive and basically kill it off. Or at least force it to lift back up and reconsider its life choices. Why did you become an orbital? Why did you take this position? You should have just stayed in the main, never aspired to anything. That's like, yeah, he's actually straight up gonna die, so... Well, the un I'd say this is best case scenario for him. Even better that he arrives just in time to jump on top of these two colossi. He takes some damage, but the Medivacs can heal that back up. And now he's removed a lot of the army supply that Mana was building there. Oh, oh maybe he could have got those colossi as well. Maybe he still will. Widow Mines? They all went off. A bunch blew up. Uh, is Bjorn happy enough just having done that? I don't think so. I like the base trade, but Mana already had the damage done. The problem for Bjorn is that this happened too late. If this had happened a little sooner for Bjorn, Mana might not be able to justify recall, and he has to keep trading, whereas now he's already killed the base to put him one base up, never mind getting his expansion online on top of that. And Bjorn really does just have one final army to try and make this happen with. I mean, in some ways, though, those two Colossi dying still are a major factor. With four Colossi, I don't see how Mana loses a fight. With two, it's plausible, right? You've got an upgrade lead as a Terran, a good surround, a missed force field. Mana steps too far forward. There's a world in which it can happen for sure. Problem is, Bjorn currently is looking as though he's going to cancel the fourth base or kill the fourth base. And he's going to lose so many units on the left side. The force fields have been stunning this game. Absolutely beautiful all game long. Uh, the force fields have actually just been completely game-winning for mana through and through as the bio army here picking off a stalker. Would of mine getting a couple of zealots. Stalk still kind of chasing down. Medivacs are continuing to, to blink in. A couple of... Uh, sorry, stalkers continue to chase blink in after those medivacs. And a couple of them are fallen already. Oh, Would of mine's burrowing up. Another medivac shot down. Gun's been in trouble all game long. And that will not be changing towards the final few moments here. As we have got ourselves. Mana's army just going to take this fight. Starts charge in. The Colossi sit back. The Stalkers aren't even involved with the army, really. Uh, which maybe helps Bjorn enough to stay alive for a few moments longer. SCV's obviously dropping by the wayside. Because that's the main base orbital. Relocated to the low ground. The Colossi in some trouble as Marauders jump on them. But even that is not enough. And Mana will tie our series 1-1 one, one in this best of three. Exciting here in our ESL Open Cup Europe, number 90. And we've got one final map in the round of 16. Like I say, not showtime in the round of 8, as I was kind of hyping up a little bit earlier. But Geralt, he was able to knock him out 2-0, to zero, apparently. That's obviously a big deal. In the bottom left, 
Looking for that round of eight. Looking for that prize money guaranteed today. It is Mana at Blue Protoss from Team Liquid. Early probe across the map. As he takes on Bjorn, our red Terran player. In the top right-hand side. Early probe. What are we going to do with you? Just a super early scout. So the reason you want to go super early scout here is because of what bjorn has been doing. Mana is sick of playing blind against these Warlocks. So yes, it's a very early probe. But you now know immediately what Bjorn is doing or what Bjorn is not doing. And that is obviously really good information to have. So Bjorn can't really do another one of those, Hey, look at me, I'm just going to wall off you and you don't know what I'm up to sort of things. And this probe can be a bit annoying in a second, you know, SCV already pulled off the line to help push that around, push it back. Uh, so that's obviously pretty substantial. And uh, yeah, it's obviously not your, your ordinary everyday kind of situation, but uh, it ain't bad. It's uh, like I say, I think for, for someone who's been kind of playing those mind games on you, it's a worthwhile adjustment going into this game three, for sure. Cybercore going to go down, followed by the Nexus back at home for mana. As Bjorn does get his command center down. Marine first. There's that probe. Wasn't actually attacking the SCV. Don't think it would have gotten it anyway. That's maybe one of the reasons you go Marine first here as well. Just push that probe away ASAP rather than having to wait for the Reaper. Um, but I mean, obviously, then you also get to speed up the factory. That gets to start without a Reaper being invested into. So that's 50 gas sooner. Now we take a second gas and we'll see where Bjorn takes this. Off the factory and probably, of course, into the starport as well. We'll see how this is going to go. So that factory is coming through. And as I mentioned, the reactor is already building the barracks. Under our depth coming in. 2,000 atmospheres, nice large map. And Madness is going to straight up drop a second gateway across the other side of it. So he's just going to put the pressure on early in this game. Bjorn is building a Hellion, so I really love this because y you really do get into a position here, whereas Bjorn, you don't have a lot of units super early to necessarily defend because you're focusing on the count of the attack across the map and getting a Hellion up and so on, multiple Hellions to run by. So it can cause issues. I would say at the very least, you'd really hope to have a bunker here. As he does at least your Widowmine now. That's a little bit better, though, so it's only just going to be a Hellion into Widowmine. It's actually very standard from Bjorn. Still needs a bunker, because obviously this is going to be now two extra gates built and three gateways in total. That is the kind of pressure you don't deal with super easily, let me tell you that. Another adept scene here is Bjorn moves his Hellion across the left side, and it's a Stargate behind it. So three gates into Stargates. I mean, the three gates alone should cause issues looking at the current setup, that's for sure. As do have our... Marines over to the natural, the Hellion moves through, probes blocking the main ramp. That's cute, because now Bjorn doesn't know anything of what's going on. He sees a gateway at the front, he doesn't get any tech reads in the main base. So, oh, now maybe he does. No, probe gets the kill. Hero probe. He also doesn't see that, you know, stuff is missing or that the tech is delayed, giving away the fact that it's extra gates early. As uh, these are depths, though. Being chased by SCVs, those Marines obviously on the wrong side of the CC, they're having to chase around and being dragged around they weren't able to keep up so that's actually turned into a much better fight for mana okay not something that's going to end the game or anything but definitely putting you in a good spot to begin with here is i wouldn't mind going to jump over the other side burrow up now oh, that's dead oh no it burrowed what it got burrowed before the adept shots hit that's amazing i thought that was for sure just going to go down that's actually a big deal because you can zone these units around that widow mine now and that really does go a long way to helping Adept gives itself up. The Cyclone shows up to help with some damage output, though, as a Viking is landed too. Anything and everything that Bjorn can scrap together to get a defense going here. Cyclone micros back beautifully, keeps itself away from those Stalker shots, and Bjorn will defend. Only four SCVs down, so he's in a perfectly playable worker position uh, compared to Mana. That was actually a really good defense, I think, considering there's no bunker. He made it look a lot easier than it should have been. Only one SCV lost. Remember, of course... Only one SCV loss also comes at the cost of a lot of lost mining time. Now the Cyclone goes down. As the Stalker can't grow, as you probably are still regretting no bunker, but now there's a Siege Tank. And Stalkers, if they go too far forward here, multiple will go down. Two died, and the others are very low HP. And the back and forth here has really been stellar between Bjorn and Mana. A really fantastic little bit of TVP action.
Other than it, fantastic stuff across the board, I gotta say. As, uh, this might have kind of boosted out to see what was where. There is that proxy on the top left, but Bjorn was not able to scout that out yet, so he'll not be able to do anything about it as he gets to a Raven. More Marines and tanks. Are we gonna get a push here this time? At home, Mana built these Phoenix, right? Now, Phoenix can be useful against a push like this because obviously you can lift up the tanks and take them out the equation if the Phoenix don't get targeted down. Charge would help a lot with that. And right now, Charge the Zelds are my major issue because I feel like the Charge of Zelds will not do a lot. But Bjorn, at most, is just going to be dropping for some harassment. He turns, so he misses the gateway again. We'll at least see the probe on the Watchtower clean that out. Uh, Watchtower doesn't give you that information either, though, so that gateway really is just going to be hidden away. And it's one of those things that's not the end of the world, but it's also maybe something Mana can use later in the game to send a couple of harassing units in, some Zealots from a weird position, doesn't have to get a Warp Prism set up to do any of that. And that's obviously beneficial if you don't have to get any of that set up going, as you see a couple of probes going down. It's the Raven, right? It's actually just clean out the other watchtowers. The Raven got one kill, and this uh, <laughs> probe here was the second probe kill, so I, I thought it was just being a bad observer, but uh, actually, there's nothing in the mineral lines for once. Phoenix gonna find the Raven, which is obviously just a sad ending to begin with. I get Marines into the main. How much do we commit here? Because obviously the Phoenix recall across. Uh, we're just going to go for as many probes as possible. Mana, probably going to start regretting having brought these probes back in here. He ends up losing 10? 11? Yeah, he doesn't have the DPS to kill off these last few uh, Marines quickly. My goodness. 13. That's a lot of damage done. That drop did so much. Okay, yes, it dies. It gets cleaned up fully, but... 13 probes! Yes, yeah, sign me up. I'll kill 13 probes whenever you want me to. Uh, that's a fantastic... Uh, Fantastic place to get put into. Alright, well, Mana probably feeling very good about that. Sorry, Bjorn probably feeling very good about that. Sorry, guys. I don't know what's up with me today, but I'm mixing up my players and my words a little bit, so... I apologize as our Phoenix go up towards the top side of the map, so they're going to go on a little bit of a rumble. Combat shield, stim pack, all of that continuing through. Oh, nice widow mine. Oh, yeah, he grabbed another widow mine there, maybe to get the lift off and maybe get a kill. But then, of course, the other one was right next to it, so it was just asking to lose Phoenix. Obviously, you can't justify that, so that one's just gonna. Well, that idea is given up. Still building Phoenix as well, by the way, so just gonna have a lot of Phoenix support in any of these fights. I do worry a little bit about what Mana's gonna do when you consider the fact that he's just gonna have Phoenix as his tech choice here. And some High Templars with Storm. The Widow Mine count is good. And the Widow Mine count is definitely one of the bigger issues. And these Liberators too. Storm doesn't do a lot against these Liberators. Because you're, obviously you can't just Storm a Liberator down. That's not effective. So those Libs are going to be able to take pretty good positions. And the Phoenix don't kill Libs very quickly either. So it can definitely help with like a push into position here. You don't see the High Templar. And knows that they seemingly probably have Storm set up. So very careful. Target firing them a little bit. Now there's no energy left on the battery. One goes down. Super battery was a moment too late there. There goes the cannon. There goes the pylon. No! And he gets a big storm. At the end, the Marines running around the corner. Oh my god, the depot goes down to wall off these zealots for a few moments and give you a little bit of time to get some additional units up defensively. Liberators are now going to be used to siege defensively, but that does mean at least they're not across the map sieging up and pushing into this base. Oh, another massive storm. You're not paying attention there. The Widow Mines, though, do so much damage. And the next storm doesn't hit anything at all. It was dead center between all of the Marines. Didn't hit any. The Marines were just standing on the edges, just tanking it because they, were, they weren't taking damage somehow. Gets the Archon? No. Can't quite turn around to kill the Archon there. Small shame because obviously it's low HP. Gets it now. Nice little lift from the Phoenix. Going to drop the Marauders back in on top of the Zealots. Giving the Zealots a chance to catch up. And all the medevacs cleaned out too. 49 to 22 army supply. If these liberators were across the map, this is probably a one game from Bjorn. That zealot counter from mana is absolutely huge. It gives him just that little bit of extra longevity to kind of get more set up at home. It's going to be seen our CC. Going to take position there. That's going to be having our uh, bio force obviously heal and buy it. As we do have our. Hey, Templar. Set up down on the 6 o'clock. Now, Blink is starting up on this Twilight Council as well. So we're going to continue bringing this in. Next stage of the game continues to establish for both players. Hmm, Ghost Academy coming up. 
Hyun doesn't look as though he's feeling like taking another fight anytime in the immediate future. Don't really blame him for that, honestly. I've already got a siege and is able to, to push those probes away. Now the Phoenix are coming over. If those Phoenix coming over, they are going to be able to shoot away at that Liberator and take it down. So Liberator falls. A little bit of lost mining time, though. I mean, Bjorn still has a 30 supply lead here. It's just, does he have the tech to really attack or to fight? Oh, he's, not, he's definitely getting there. The ghosts are coming through. Even a couple of Vikings on the way. Good for zone in the prism, if nothing else. And then you also have a baseline Viking count when Colossi take to the stage, if, if they do. Which, when you're playing Storm, Colossi is the natural next step. The problem with Disruptors is that Storm and Disruptors really fill a similar role. Which is area of effect damage that really pushes a Terran player back. Whereas the Colossi fill the role of area of effect damage that really deals damage throughout a fight, right? You know, that goes off constantly rather than one moment where you can, you know, reposition the Terran or punish them for clumping up. So yeah, you don't generally go Disruptors from here. You're typically going to go for the Colossi instead. So yeah, that uh, means that the Vikings are absolutely worth starting to build. Beyond has found the top left uh, pylon in that gateway from earlier in the game. So that's finally going to be shut down. We've seen enough of you, apparently. No more run-bys from him. As we do see, that army will continue down the left. Meanwhile, we've got an army on the right, and Mana sees it coming. 1-1 one, one against 1-1, one, one, plus 2 attack done here soon from Mana. Yun did not continue upgrades because he's playing this very heavy tech army now, right? Because he's playing into Ghosts and the um, Vikings. And that's just very expensive off the 3 bases, not yet on 4 base. So you can't afford to actually go into everything, uh, including the upgrades. So you have to slow your upgrades down to get all of this up at once. It was Disruptors, by the way. I'm kind of surprised uh, about the Disruptors. You know, for my exact reason that I already went over. I uh, was not expecting it to be Disruptors. Really was believing Colossi were the way forward. Zelda Phoenix fight on the top left. That's a fight Bjorn actually doesn't do too badly against until the storm drops down. He'll reinforce here, and actually, this is not a bad fight for Bjorn to collapse on and to take a trade against. If he can get his reinforcements here, that would have been a good amount of units to pick off. Mana realizes he stuck around there too long, and that things were only going to get troubling if he stuck around longer. Really good decision from Mana to back away there. Otherwise, he could have been losing 20 supply. And he's not in the best of positions to be losing 20 supply, so... Yeah, that's uh, a good move back from Mana. Good prediction of when he needed to be back there. I'm intrigued then as to how the Disruptors and the Storms will work together. Um, it's not easy to cast Disruptors and to cast Storms. That's another part of it, right? That's, you know, it's a lot of spell casting that you're really working with. And again, it's difficult to maybe find effect with that because they really fill in similar roles. So, see how Mana utilizes it as we drop into the main. There is just nothing here to defend this drop. So, Mana doesn't even have the energy. Okay, he does have the energy to recall in the main if he wants to. And the Storm shows up and, well, Bjorn's back in the corner. So, this Storm... He kind of just has to eat. Now he moves forward. He kills a Disruptor. And the next Disruptor he just has to dodge against because the Medivacs are gone. He can't lift out of there or anything. Oh, this was not really worth the units. Although he gets one more Disruptor, which is obviously pretty major. Pops an EMP to start this fight over here. Super Battery pops on the right side. Man, are not messing around with his defense. You know, Beyond really trying to just bait out that Disruptor shot before he commits into anything else. He knows if that Disruptor shot fires at the wrong time and he's standing in a forward position... He is not going to have a good time at all. So respecting that nicely. Because now we have ourselves. Sami in the bottom right and a little bit more bio. Heading through the left side. Zealots and disruptors and stalkers and sentries. All joined up and making a move forward. Those few zealots in some trouble. But have got a little pick off here. A maxed out Bjorn trying to make moves full base against full base. Maybe just a 9 in the 5th would be something Bjorn would be happy with right now. Massive storm again. The EMP was a moment too late. Super battery not available just yet. He has to back away from that disruptor though. So the disruptor does again same thing. Forces Bjorn to back off, right? But then, but now it buys him the extra time needed. And Bjorn cannot break that position. Critical moment because actually if Bjorn gets that on top of there, you probably do fall into quite some trouble and you probably do have a tough time clearing that up. I mean, the side defense obviously helps to hold these bases big time. Massive EMP, though, hits the High Templar. One Templar left with Storm Energy. One Marauder, I don't think you're going to make the difference there, buddy. 
not enough damage output to target that Templar down, but man, Bjorn is really just trading out really well here. Just continuing to find fights. He's stuck around here for such a long time more than anything. Uh, Medivac is going to go for a suicide mission into the main. Don't hate it. Uh, you got a couple units out of that one Medivac, right? Okay, now I hate it. <laughs> DTs, there's no scan, super battery. Oh, it's a yikes. He loses everything and doesn't kill a single thing. Yeah, that, that was a very minimal defense from Manor as well, right? Two DTs warped in and that was it. So it doesn't pull any of the rest of his army out of position. Which means Bjorn really can just... Oh, oh, man is really is just able to keep Bjorn held off. Bjorn's not able to make a move anywhere at the same time. And that's obviously what you're looking for a lot of the time with those drops. Disruptors fire forward. TT upgrade is going to be finishing here in just a few moments. Bjorn's still pressuring around the bottom side of the rest of our bio. Heading along the left. Still splitting up. I mean, Bjorn's been playing with tech units. It's just, I feel like at this stage, you maybe need to tech up even further. Or maybe just not try and force the fights as heavily as he's forcing them. I mean, this is just another sacrifice of bio units. Up here, Bjorn, DT's just going to walk in and do way too much. And uh, he's going to find the Dark Shrine maybe with the few units that unloaded in the natural, but he just lost a ton of supply. Bjorn is going to be in some trouble for sure. Yeah, I mean, no, these medivacs are stuck as well, so we've already seen Bjorn's supply, uh, supply kind of plummet. That will just plummet a little further now as these two medivacs get cleaned up. Tell you what, these few Phoenix from earlier in the game have worked freaking wonders. Like, they have just done so, so much. And it's actually really incredible what they've been able to do is... Uh, Bio army moves forward towards a, wa toward a watchtower. That's some nice EMPs here. Tears down some DTs, some value, because obviously DTs are pretty expensive to lose out on, but... I just don't know if it really makes enough of a difference at all as... Empire comes back to the bottom side of the map. Double Colossi coming through, the Dark Shrine is building on the natural. Gun has mines everywhere, by the way. Gun is gonna get maxed out, but Mana is maxed out with a bank, and I think that's the biggest difference of all. Suppose if Bjorn can keep uh, Mana from getting DTs on his side of the map, he might be able to do okay if he can clean up a few DTs very effectively. There's some possibility there. These Disruptors being targeted, but we did see one connection go off. Stalk is now walking into mines. It really is just a minefield everywhere on the map. I'll be careful about that. This bit of mine should go down, though. Observer with that army. Bjorn again, not able to break in here. I wonder at what point maybe killing these rocks would have been worthwhile, because it's not like he's been sieged from behind them. And it just gives him a bit more space to maybe walk into, or then he's like a bit more pre-split, or you can dodge right instead of just backward. I really wonder if that could have given him some chances. It looks like he's going to reinforce that right side now, but that means up in the top, he actually doesn't have that many units. He EMPs the sentries, and he'll kill a couple, but the disruptor shot's beautiful. It's really, really well. And now Bjorn is under more pressure than ever to get something done on the bottom side, because, well, he lost a base on the top. He has no response to that. He's just going to back away. And now he's just... I mean, all these wooden mines are just lying around the map. are starting to get cleaned up very efficiently. They, I mean, just not doing anything at all. So that supply just dropping by the wayside. Mana, so much money in the bank. And he just recalled over here. He knows exactly where this army is. And he's just going to make sure I am absolutely in position to deal with it. Then is going to relocate back around the right. That's info mana doesn't have. But this observer will tell him... And the map control for mana is beautiful. He sees so much. He's not being caught off guard by a single thing. It's a really, really solid game of PvT. You know, it's just really... He, his defense is absolutely sturdy. He is not being broken by anything. And to keep that up for so long against Bjorn, who has really thrown everything and the kitchen sink at mana. Like, he has not left anything out from, from trying to push, from trying to break... Now, the one thing I think would have been really nice from Bjorn would have been to go Liberators, because a good amount of libs, he's had the time to get to a good Liberator count, and a good amount of libs can siege up some of these positions and give him an easier push in, or force Mana into a better response against libs, which means he's got to free up some of the other supply, which maybe makes room for the bio units to make plays. But yeah, that's obviously just not arisen at all, uh, considering how everything else played out. Oh no, Disruptor Shots are... Pretty sizable to start. 
Okay, Bjorn needs to trade so well. He needs to, like, wipe half of this army for free, basically. He's gonna get on top of the Colossi quickly. It's not a bad start to the fight, in all honesty, but then everything else of mana shows up, and it's just not gonna be enough for Bjorn. He's losing SCVs on the other side of the map while this happens. He tries to lift on out of there. The Stalkers blink. They get an empty medevac, so not a full one. A saving grace for Bjorn, but not enough to save the game. GG, and mana goes to the round of eight, where he'll play against Geralt.